Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Imperial Holonet. I am JID123. I'm Brother Antilles. And once again, I'm here... oh. and once again, I was just going to say Deadpoolzilla, and yeah, let's just move on. Okay. Um, and we are here today to cover Star Wars Celebration 2017, Day One. So, um, let's see. How, how do you guys want to start? You want to just go over the day's events? Uh, I guess. Alrighty. Well, um, the first thing that um, actually was announced was actually announced last night was the uh, arrival of a new mini animated series called Star Wars Forces of Destiny, a mini series type show that uh, details the in between tales of our female heroines of the Star Wars universe. From um, from Rey to Ahsoka to Padme to Leia to even Sabine and Hera, basically a mini series of one shots. And yet, nothing about our bravest and greatest hero of all. Who would that be? The one who sought to end the, the corrupt, terroristic actions of the Republic oh. and bring peace and order to the galaxy. For shame. Our Emperor. <laughs> exactly. All hail Ray Sloan. But yeah, uh, this sounds cool. Looks nice. Did they say how long this was going to be? Like two minutes each? No, I mean I mean the series. Oh. I assume it's probably going to be like... Because I just thought it would be like ten parts. Yeah, probably. Or something kind of like how the Gravity Falls shorts were whenever they just felt like it. There was actually a little preview of um, uh, Ray and BB-8 on the, that takes place like just right in between a, the fourth when she gets BB-8 and when they go to the junkyard. Um, that looked good, but yeah, um, I have nothing to say on this. Um, it just looks fun. Uh, yeah, the title seems strange, but yeah, every, the 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 title everyone thought was going to be the title for episode eight. <laughs> I would have expected this to be, like, a role-playing game or a card game or something like that. I don't know if Destiny seems strange yeah. for what I, this. What I, think is really, what I think is really cool is that we have all the... We have um, Daisy Ridley... Um, what's the... Um, um, Felicity Jones. Felicity Jones and the per actress who plays Maz all back together to do these voices. That's always cool. Or Vanessa Marshall and the others back as well, actually. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. them all back too. Um, but I, I that really took me aback. I was like, you got Felicity Jones and Daisley Ridley to do these? How much did you pay them? Paying the Force that Force Awakens money. That's what they're paying them. <laughs> <laughs> that's my little joke. Um, so yeah, that that is cool. Um, and then and uh, this actually creates a little bit of hope that we might be able to get uh, more professional actors for Rebels. Yeah. Well, they actually do hire some of the original uh, voices. Um, well, you know, uh, Boris Whitaker came back for Saw. Um, what's her name? Yeah, but I mean, like... Name? What's her name? I, I, uh, Jennifer O'Reilly. Yeah, but I mean, like, the main cast hasn't been, of any of the movies haven't been in them. Oh, right. Well, it's not like we can get Mark Hamill to play young Luke Skywalker now, can we, Red? I don't know, no, I think he could. He could pull it off. Yeah, it, by the time... Oh my gosh, it lines up. We could actually have Oscar Isaac play newborn Poe in season four. Because he would have been born <laughs> that year. So we could have him just go, wah, wah, for like five seconds in the background of the Avon Temple. Uh, but yeah, that what really got me is that, you know, we, and it's also, I, isn't it the same art style from the new Tangled animated series? Because it looks like it. A little Tangled bit. That's an animated series? Yeah. Uh, kind of. Oh. It looks a little more. I don't know. It did look a little different, but not too much. It looks similar. Probably a similar team. Yeah. Um, but And it also looks like all of the episodes are going to involve a droid in some case. Like, I guess there's going to be a story of Sabine and Chopper and one with R2 and, uh, and uh, Leia. And of course you've got... So I guess that means, I guess that, means that Urso and K2 are going to have an adventure together. How does that work exactly? I don't know. And that's the other thing is that got me wondering is that it was like, 
if you're having it, you're doing a story with Ray and BB-8. It, where does this take place? Uh, right, in be- yeah. right before it's they go strange. to the junkyard. They actually showed a preview for that one. Yeah, but if they have like ten episodes, they can only use that character once because there's not really any in between area because she's unconscious for like a bunch of stuff and then tied up for the other for like the second and third acts of the film. Yeah, we'll third her, act. Maybe we'll see her dreams. Oh. Yeah. The other thing that it's kind of got me is like a lot of people are bitching about. Oh, it's all about girl power, and I'm like, dude, seriously. Star Wars has been a sausage fest for a good a good long time. I give the ladies these. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it is funny that we have uh like the inspirational tales while this kitchen's like I mean Jin is by the end, but if you do anything with that character pre the third act of Rogue One, I don't think that character's that inspirational pre that third act. Yeah, like, she is. It doesn't matter if the Empire reigns across you know, reigns the flag across count- countless worlds. Doesn't matter if you don't look up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little cynical. I don't remember that's why I love that character, but still. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this... It, it's cool, and I'm. they said this summer, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, like, late summer. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm... I'm pretty cool with this, and it's kind of cool. It's pretty cool that, to get all these actresses to voice these characters again, and we get to more, do more stuff with Jin. Yay! If things weren't so under wrap, it would have been cool. Cool if we could have gotten KMT for this, but sadly, it won't line up. Well, they can always yeah. just make more later. I, I, yeah, that'd be nice. I, I feel like this probably won't be like one of those series that has like a definitive end date. Just like make whenever we want. Yeah, I mean that's the vibe. If I anything. Get. I, if anything, this kind of, this will probably be Disney's equivalent, though not as good as the Tarkovsky Star Wars series. <laughs> oh man! I mean, yeah. in the sense that it's going to be a mini series played it, in prime time at Disney. It's like and now, I just want to see General Grievous show up and be like, like make make peace with the Force. <sighs> if he if he dies in Obi Wan's hands, and he's like. <laughs> Your lightsaber would have made a fine addition to my collection. <laughs> Under the Obi Wan, in his final moments, hands him the lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Aww. So, so I would have got teary eyed. Yeah. That happened. Uh, what's another good? Uh, I guess like maybe if these do well, maybe we can get other Star Wars stories. Maybe like get stories with Han and Luke and all of them. Animated Star Wars tales, pretty much. You're- yeah. Oh, that'd be so cool. Again, just do like, the do the freaking two D Clone Wars again. Or how about a how about like a series of one shots focusing on the Sith? That'd be nice. Oh, we could yeah, do our cool. idea of the Sith Academy. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. I would love to do right. Start writing that. Sith you could. Academy. You could do. Um, you could do a story on Kylo. You could do a story on Palpatine, Vader, Maul. That'd be awesome. Uh, yeah. Just a little one shot of what Palpatine does on his day to day routine. <laughs> That's what I would love to see. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, oh, anybody else has any final thoughts before we move on? No. Oh, I thought you were going to have more. Go ahead. No, just want to see Ray Sloan. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see. Um, like, we need to inspire young girls. Show them the biggest fascist of them all. Exactly. We, we <laughs> serve a beloved emperor. Um. <laughs> Oh, speaking of Ray Sloan, I guess, um, do you guys want to talk about the Battlefront teaser trailer? Do you want to save that for when the big one Save comes? that for later. Okay. Save, save that for when the trailer comes out, officially. Alrighty. Um, so I guess the next big thing that happened was, of course, the, uh, 40th, um, celebration panel, which I got, to, which I watched live, and, um, did you guys see it, um, when they posted it later? I heard stuff. I didn't watch it yet. Ah. Yeah, I I didn't watch it. Just give us the just give us the juicy bits. Um, George Lucas was there. Um, oh, has he has he apologized to Disney for calling them white slavers? Has he done that? No. Um, <laughs> I don't man. think anyone, even Disney, just didn't want to talk about. That. I, I don't think anyone wants to speak about that. Let's see. George was there. <laughs> he talked, and then um, then after that, uh, basically George was there through the whole thing. Um, 
he just sat there through the whole thing, um, you know, talked, and then, you know, had other people show up. With, um, then Dave Filoni came in, then he to Dave hugged, they talked a bit about tel television and stuff. And then um, Hayden Christensen and Ian McDermott showed up, and they talked about their time with Star Wars. Basically, just everybody re recollecting about Star Wars. And then um, Mark Hamill, uh, Billy D, um, Anthony Daniels, and, um, oh shoot, I always forget Chewie's actor's name. I'm sorry, I always forget that. Peter Mayhew. Peter Mayhew showed up, and they talked. And then Harrison Ford showed up, of all people. That was a surprise. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, they were all recollect, you know, recollecting. And then they all left. And then um, George and Kathleen Kennedy um, took the stage again. And then there was a nice tribute to um, Carrie Fisher. Um, then I think I might be getting this out of order, but uh, Billy Lord, Carrie's daughter, showed up and she gave her a little tribute to her mother. And then finally, John Williams appeared with the Orlando Philharmonic Orchestra and basically um, played some Star Wars music, fanfare, and all that good stuff. And that was it. That was the 40th anniversary. That is the bullet points of that panel. Oh, and there were. Some... Oh, and didn't we also get a behind the scenes thing really briefly for episode eight that showed. Uh, that was during the Carrie what... Fisher tribute. Um, mm. Yeah, we got to see what her hair would look like for that movie. Yeah, and oh, and. Um, 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 <clears throat> Mace Windu and Qui Gon Jinn showed up as well uh, via screen. Liam Neeson and. <laughs> Samuel Jackson showed up just to say, you know, hello, and, you know, via screen, via message. Um, and that was it. That was pretty much the uh, 40th anniversary, 40th celebration panel. That is the bullet points. I hope I made that as entertaining as possible. <laughs> so I guess the other thing is, like, the toys that got announced. Yeah, we got toy stuff. Uh... Especially we got Triple Zero and BT. Oh yeah! I Wait, where that. were they? I saw that. I saw that. Um, was anyone else shocked by that? That we're actually getting figures of Triple Zero and BT One. Wait, which line was that for? Um, it's not a pop figure. It's like Those Joel. Were... Do you know what it is? Do you no, know the but they looked. But they looked fancy. Uh... Oh, are they the Hot Toys then? They might. Yeah, be. it's Hot Toys. That's it. That's Hot Toys. Oh, that's so cool! And apparently, Palpatine's getting one later too. A hot toy. That's awesome. I need to. Someone needs to tell Ian that. Uh, uh, someone needs to tell Ian that BT and and Triple Zero are getting hot toy figures because he will be all over that shit. I'll tell him. I'll tell him right now. Actually, <laughs> didn't we know about that for a while? I didn't. I I only found this yeah, out I like told Ian about that the other day. Or no, no, the other day, <laughs> like a month ago, when we found out. <laughs> I still can't believe we're actually doing new stuff because we still haven't freaking done uh, what you might call it yet. Um, uh, Afra as a figure, which I am still waiting on. We're getting the droid, so we're coming close. We might get there. We might get there. I need an Afra figure. Well, that, I think this is the first time we've gotten from the Marvel comics a character figure, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, so it's a start, right? Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. So I, I, I don't doubt, Red, that we're going to get an Afro figure soon. Yeah, if Star Wars figures start doing better. Um, it's a sucky time to be a Star Wars collector. I'm looking right now in the Jedi count, uh, Jedi Temple archives. Black Series figures on sale for five eighty five, or I saw five eighty four. They're usually twenty bucks. That's how low the sales are. Companies have to put them down to a quarter the price. Because <laughs> they keep shipping like two figures. They ship like a hundred of two figures as opposed to, you know, maybe 25 of, you know, several characters. But no, no, we, we need to ship a shitload of the same exact character. <sighs> but yeah, so... Um, we're going to get a Sandcrawler and Gonk Droid playset for Droid Factory, which is back, which is so exciting. Uh, we're getting uh, like a Christmas droid looking thing. We're getting R3B, oh, R3 
Boo 17, which is like a through green Astro Mech for Droid Factory. We're getting BB 8 uh, on a sort of vintage collection card back. Um, I don't know if this is going to be some sort of continuous. Oh, Droid, I think what they might be doing is. I forget what the new setup for Droid Factory is. I, I assume it's the same as before, but we don't have that many figures, so. I don't know. But we're getting a shitload more droids uh, from the movies, which is really cool. Uh, like, we have an entire line of protocol droids. Uh, and so that's that's exciting. Uh, we're also getting a Black Series Commander Gree. Black Series 6 inch, which is good. Again, they need to fix the distribution for those, but yeah. Um, and we're getting, like, vintage collection. Well, not vintage collection. Uh, stuff about the old movie figure just for the anniversary we're doing a bunch of a new hope stuff that's just old figures repackaged because they hate joy well um what's the next thing we should talk about um you, uh, you want to talk about the Rebels thing? That wasn't a Rebels thing. Uh, that was just David. Not Pop. Rebels. Sorry, Star Wars animation uh, and inspiration thing. Yeah, um, I didn't get Origins. much. In, I didn't get much into that. They didn't really announce too much. They just showed some. Well, nice the big stuff. problem was if you were watching the stream, they were talking about concept art and images the entire time. Yeah. Which the stream broke. Was set up in a way where you couldn't see it. Hopefully, they. Whoever the hell in was post. in charge of that deserves to be fired. <laughs> So yeah, what did uh, so what year. so what did they announce exactly? Nothing uh, too big. Well, they, they they did accidentally announce something, which I'll get to at the end, which was totally unintentional. But they showed us like the Hammerhead Corvette and how the designs it went through and the additional engine and everything. So like Pablo Hidalgo was was uh, showing us some of the, uh, what do call it? Like like concept art models and stuff that they were making. Uh, I went through a few iterations. Uh, some of which are really cool. Uh, like, they kept decking it out with uh, escape pods and then, like, changing the way... Like, there's one that has, like, two of the engine, like, like doubled and, like, stacked on top of the other. And one that has, like, on the eye, like, miniature versions of the uh, cockpit, which is just really cool looking. Uh, we got the first concept art of Ahsoka, um, which was from 2005, because that's how far back she was thinking about that character. Uh, we got some background stuff on like how uh, Pablo and Dave came up with the name Ashla, which was the proto name, and how like a lot of stuff came out for a lot of Clone Wars characters. Uh, they talked about like the ghost and uh, putting that in, and the, the extra details they added to it, and. Yeah, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, the one of the really stuff. cool things we got was um, apparently when uh, uh, Cad Bane was first created, he was supposed to be Dirge. Oh. Huh. Which, which Dave said they, you know, they wanted to make it happen, but they weren't able to um, CG it. Like, they, they, they knew they wouldn't have the budget to correctly do that, and Dave said that his philosophy is essentially... If you can't you know, do a character justice and the only way to do them would be to cut out major parts of what makes them cool and stuff, it's not that character. Well, that's bullshit considering, you know, we had Dash Rendar ship, but no fucking Dash Rendar. Uh, well, at least he didn't bring Dash Rendar character Dash Rendar. I think it's kind of different. He did the Quillen Voss, which was annoying, but... Then again, I don't think he had control over that situation. I think that was just bad writers. I think that was a George. Management. I think that was a George Lucas decision. I think yeah, that was a Lucas thing or someone. But here's actually like a fun fact: if they couldn't animate well, Dirge I, I, as a giant tentacle monster thing, don't do Dirge. So that was good. Darwin then, has like, enough you know, they, giant tentacle monsters now, though. Maybe he can exactly. come back. He can come. Ah, oh, Dirge is going to be that giant, that sea tentacle monster that attacks Ray in episode he eight. Apparently, little, he had the helmet just squished to his head. What is it with fucking tentacle monsters in this new era of Star Wars? Somebody's uh, a hentai it's, like, it's almost like sci-fi writers are like sexually repressed it's, or something. It's it's like, have, no. did everyone just watch a mountain of tentacle hentai before doing these? 
<laughs> that's that's actually what they were watching when they bought Star Wars. <laughs> and they were like, we need to buy Star Wars so we can have a giant... There's, yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, it goes back to episode 6, though, because it's Lando and the Sarlacc. That is true. That is true. I'm just saying. Yeah, I actually learned something kind of interesting a couple of weeks ago, which I never realized. You know those Night Sister episodes from Clone Wars, which they actually did talk about a little bit in the, uh, um, in the uh, in the animation thing. Apparently, those were written by Katie Lucas, who is George Lucas's daughter. She actually wrote episodes for Clone Wars. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that. Totally. Yeah, that's she's the one who made Ventress into like a self-insert character, as Connor always says. Yeah. If you like, if you watch behind-the-scenes stuff, that's what that character becomes. Um, do you want to talk about the other Cad Bane thing that happened? Uh, I'll get to that at the end because that was with Amidon. But uh, right. we also saw uh, like some other things. Uh, I'm trying to think what's the other shit that was going on. Uh, they talked a little bit about. Uh, Oh, fuck, what am I thinking of? Um, uh, like, the ghost. Oh, we talked about we that. We talked about Rex. Uh, Rex. Yeah. The, um, okay, so, they were flipping through, and it sucks because we couldn't see the image, but they were flipping through, and all of a sudden, Pablo, like, Dave was, like, starting to talk to somebody as he flipped through, and Pablo was just like, whoa, 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 wait, don't, don't, don't show that. And Dave was like, whoa, oh, shit. He didn't actually swear. But, apparently... They accidentally put an image in that folder that was that was supposed to be for Saturday's Rebels thing, and so we had an image of Rex with his yellow bushy beard in a Rebel Commando outfit. The same one from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> kind of. It has blue striping on it though, so it, I, I, it 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 looks more like a mix between the Return of the Jedi one and the ones that are used by the Pathfinders on Scarif. Rex is on Scarif confirmed. Rex, that'd, be, that'd be cool if he were. Oh. That would be depressing. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, no, that's pretty. That uh, that was pretty cool. Um, did hear about that one? It made me go, huh? What? And I love. Uh, I was always like almost tempted to make a like. Oh no, Dave Filoni left his Ahsoka head tie in, in the folder. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is Ahsoka Wolf head tie in the folder. You know, because Dave Filoni loves his wolves. A little too much. Yep. Uh. Oh no! Sorry, I'm incorrect. It's wait. There's no blue armor. Oh wait, nope, nope. I was right. Okay, yeah, it just says wolf because that's all the things on the thing. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's you. We get to see Rex, and yeah, it's not the Return of the Jedi camo. That's a different thing. That's a Pathfinder outfit for. Like, I'd assume they eventually change a little bit, but, like, the arms and everything are the same. Just he has the clone gauntlets. You might lose them. You could take them off. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he, they were too heavy for that mission. I don't know. But it is a different outfit. But, oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, was there anything else they talked about of importance? Uh, just, the, as far as I can remember, just the Cad Bane thing, like you said, which is we got a clip of a clone, uh, not a, clip but like the uh unfinished uh uh animation yeah whatever the f- correct term is I forget animatic the word. yeah th- there it is animatic for um yeah. uh a f- an episode of rebels that we had heard about and saw concept art for which is boba being trained by cad bane at in the boba fett armor and if they have like the shootout between them and it's actually how cad was gonna die where they'd have the shootout and boba would actually kill him but get hit in the face leaving the smoldering dent in his armor from the original trilogy. Why didn't we get that? I know, but this is a good thing because it means that Cad Bane can still be alive. Oh yeah, because Dave, by the end of it, kind of was like, I mean, yeah, I've got to go, got to go. Kind of ended it quickly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Cad Bane... You, you know how... And you, I'm still surprised that he killed Maul off finally. <laughs> you know I how know. Cad Bane loves to keep his characters around. Do you mean Dave Filoni? You, Dave Filoni. Who did I say? You said Cad Bane. Cad Bane. Or Sorry, is Cad Dave Bane. Fil- Dave Filoni. Shut up. 
And now Shut I up, have Gil. such a cool idea of, of Cad Bane. To like, <laughs> he, he runs off. And, like, currently during, uh, you know, the events of the movies, he's actually just, like, running a TV show on Coruscant. <laughs> it could happen. But, yeah, uh, um, what was next? Uh, the Ian McDermott panel. I think that was next. Ooh, yeah, the that Ian McDermott fun. panel was awesome. That was fun. Um, just... Ian McDermott being Ian McDermott, that's great. Um, Which I, I watched that, that he is very funny, and I he, he is hysterical. And um, what was I gonna? There was something he there was something he said during the panel that made me and that made me go, "My God, this man is amazing." <laughs> was it the uh, politician thing? Yeah, was that? Yeah, that that that's it. Someone's been watching the news, hasn't he? He's been watching the news, hasn't he? So great. Uh, um, yeah, he, he, he was just loads of fun. Uh, and like the just a lot of the behind-the-scenes stories were really cool. Um, uh, yeah, that was great. Um, it kind of makes me... It kind of reminds me of... If you guys remember the Revenge of the Sith back um, behind the scenes with him going back to being the Emperor... Um, and he made this mm-hmm. joke, and he made like this joke about his his uh, sexuality to uh, to George Lucas, and you can clearly see on George fa- George's face where he's like, I don't know how to respond to that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, oh that's great. <laughs> and also, he refused to do the "I am the Senate" thing, which was great. I was like, oh, say this thing, <laughs> say this thing, the memes say. Oops, sorry. That was funny. Yeah. Thank God for that. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. Then there was the uh, Ray Park one. I saw a bit of that. Did, um, man, that guy can move. Mm-hmm. Like an yeah, how old was he? Like nearly 50 now, right? I think he's like in his 40s. No, he'd be like... Uh, hold on. He's gotta be like in his... I think he's in his 40s. Ray Park is 42. But yeah, man. so early for early, but still early forties and still be able to move like that. I know, like, mm-hmm. whoa, you are awesome. Um, and that's, but that all the big things. Yeah, it was. It, it, it's basically an appetizer for what's to come. Honestly. Oh yeah, tomorrow and Saturday are like the big ones. Um, tomorrow just... eleven is the uh, the. Uh, TLJ panel. Everybody get ready. Buckle down. I mean, yeah. we know there's going to so, be a trailer or something, so... Yeah. Also, do you think we'll get another movie announcement, or not? When would they announce it, though? <sighs> hmm. Um, let me see panel listings. So that 40th anniversary thing was really good. That was my favorite of the day. Oh, let's see. Panels and screenings. Um, oh, dear God. Um, <laughs> there must be a lot of them. My thing, my, thing, my thing keeps flipping up to the top of the... Oh, I hate when it does that. Uh, hold on. That's tickets. Let me see. Schedule. There we go. Um... Friday, we have Abrams Bush, uh, Lego thing, uh, Inside Star Wars Insider, Inside the Force. Can't find anything good in terms of, uh, unless they do it like major panels, like, unless they do it like obscurely. Yeah, I I think probably what they'd go for is um, because you wouldn't announce it during your TLJ panel because that just seemed counterintuitive. Yeah, um, and there isn't going to be a hand panel. I don't. Um, is there like a future Star Wars movie? Oh wait, wait, I got it. Uh, the Last Jedi panel. Um, Warwick Davis, Mark Hamill tribute to Carrie Fisher. Then Saturday, Rebels, Anthony Daniels, Battlefront 2, 
and Sunday, Mark Hamill closing ceremony. Um, Maybe during the closing ceremony? Potentially. When did they... How did they reveal Rogue One? What was Rogue One revealed with? I know it was a celebration in Anaheim, but... Ooh. Oh, how was, I thought Rogue One was, like, just announced, like, during the early slot. Like, that was just kind of it. It was, like, Episode 7, ep- Episode 7, 8, 9, Rogue One, Han. I swear that's how I think it, it happened. I think, I think if I remember right, it was, like, during um, the Force Awakens panel, right? When they announced... That, when they or, talked or wasn't about, it, like, a future of Star Wars on film? No, I don't... I don't think that was it, because that what happened last year was Rogue One, the Rogue One... Oh, you're right, that, that was what they did for, uh... I was talking about Rogue One moving forward, and well, that's that's when they revealed. I think there was a slot open, but not that what that slot was. I mean, they could do it in TLJ. Um, Again, this seems counterintuitive, especially considering I don't. Not think, exactly. I mean, yeah, they could, but but when you release what? a TLJ trailer and then a new movie, it's like what what, what are more people going to watch? I mean, they're not going to watch it. It the, doesn't change anything. They're watching the same video and. That's you true. don't have to choose between either. That's true. I guess they could do that. Uh, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. That also would make, like, Ewan McGregor in a room with all those people, which would be awesome. Because uh, what other panel would you possibly be able to do that at? Yeah. Uh, I can't... <laughs> let me think. I was surprised Ewan McGregor didn't show up for this 40th anniversary one, but maybe that's why they're shaking it. Hayden was there, right? Yeah, Hayden was there. Oh, yeah. there was also the Fets. Oh, that in was a, room. That was, that was the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is great. Th- those two have such good chemistry. I really need a freaking Boba Fett movie with with Django and him in flashbacks. <laughs> That'd be so good. Well, I, you would have to have Jeremy Bullock in there, but where, like, ha- like maybe have him as an old, like, an, a cameo. Put on the, uh, the, you could have him be like Django's dad. You could have him be just like some random stranger who docks to Boba. Or, oh, you know, Boba in most cases has like an accountant or like someone who sets up, it was like a contact for him. Have him be that guy. Yeah. Makes fun sense. fact, I didn't, fun fact, Bullock was also in the in Doctor Who. Who did he play? Uh, he was in the episode The Time Warrior, which was Sarah Jane and the Centaurans' first appearance. It's a third Doctor story. Was he one of the Centaurans? No, he was like a medieval knight. Oh, he's that guy. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Cool. Um, let's see what was else. I think that was it for day one of Celebration, unless I am forgetting anything, but I'm not sure I am. Uh, no, I think you got really. all the major. I think you got all the major stuff. Okay. Just hours of random shots of crowds with Star Wars music put over it. Hey, they sing the Yub Nub song, so I'm oh, happy. I guess I will say I do have one an- another annoyance with the uh, the animation panel, which is they play like the uh, like Jin's theme or whatever at the beginning, like I, like it just for really briefly as they all step on stage. Why not the Clone Wars theme? <laughs> you have Dave Filoni and Pablo Hidalgo walking onto a thing for you know, and have like 15 seconds of score. Use the Clone Wars or Rebels themes. Hmm. Well, strangely, they talked a lot about Rogue One in an animation uh, panel. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Um, well, um, everybody, thanks for listening. Sorry if it was kind of a lackluster, but uh, this is... As Deadpoolzilla says, this is just the appetizer. The main course will begin soon, tomorrow. Um, so trailer, trailer, trailer. Tra- tra- I hope so. I well, hope so. If, if we if, if we get a trailer, we'll have to do like a whole video if uh, in and of itself on the trailer. Oh yeah, yeah, completely. So it would be like it, well, be two videos. then again, there's only like two other panels that day, and they're not really big ones. No. Nah, but watch this. We'll, uh, watch this. Friday and Saturday, we'll probably be having like a ton of shit, and well, we'll we're have gonna to, need to do one on just the rebels and one just on Battlefronts. Well, 
And that's Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, especially, especially considering if that Battlefront trailer goes down well, then yeah, definitely. Um, although, um, I think I'm thinking it is. I'm thinking it is. Um, anyway, thank you for listening. Get some rest for anybody who's actually listening in Orlando. I doubt anybody is, but if you are, that's awesome. Yeah, we'll send this to our friends who are in Orlando and make them feel guilty. And about give us your there th- and we aren't. They can feel they can unguilt get themselves unguilted by giving me a Thrawn pop. And this yes, thing. people who are in Orlando buy a Thrawn pop for me. No, Buy for me. <laughs> Buy four. Buy five, just in case. <laughs> um, and until next time, everybody. Later.